Hey guys, I know it's been a while. Um, I just wanted to show off my PlayStation 4 controllers. Uh, back around August of 2023, I've, I bought a PlayStation 4 Pro. And I know it's like previous gen of posts, of, let's say getting the PlayStation 5, and now I have uh, my reasoning for this. But I just wanted to show off my PlayStation 4 controllers. I have four controllers. They are limited edition ones, of course. And as you can see here, I have my PlayStation 4 Pro right here. This is the 500 million limited edition. I bought this off of eBay. Yeah, it was like around $400. 420 I think plus shipping and tax so that was like more than 420 of course and it's just a PlayStation Lite right here push the button it's basically dead because I tend to use batteries opposed to just a wire yep this is my PlayStation 4 Pro this is the like I said the 500 million limited edition this costs a lot of money online and the reason why it does is because obviously it's a limited edition and what's so special about this playstation 4 pro is that this cost ha or has a capacity of two terabytes opposed to the usual one terabyte from the other playstation 4 pros or like when the playstation 4 slim launched back in like september 29th 2016 there was either a 500 gigabyte one and a one terabyte one so this right here happens to be having two terabytes built in, which is cool for those of you who play a lot of games, or if you just want to build off a lot of games that you want to transfer over to PS5, because there are some games that are PS4 to PS5 upgrades, especially for the ones that have auto-popping trophies. And that's my reasoning for why I got the PlayStation 4, opposed to the PlayStation 5, and specifically I got a Pro, model because of the hard drive purposes and plus the pro happens to have the updated specs and all that so that way you get the playstation for the regular one for 2013 and you're playing a game and then it just makes the jet engine shine and then it would turn red and then it would overheat and it would shut off like force shut down and then <laughs> don't want that shit to sound like it explodes <laughs> so moving on to my playstation 4 uh, collection right here this is the 500 million limited edition uh controller obviously comes with the console when i bought it off of uh, someone on ebay the, they had the incorrect controller color so i just said to them can i just buy the console with the console only with the cords and all that because they had the a controller that was an incorrect color so that's why i was able to get it at a negotiable price this right here is it's very cool it's very special i like how it's like a translucent dark blue very nice the only thing is i have to get this fixed because i think this has stick drift now moving on to here this is the playstation 4 controller the 20th anniversary controller uh what's so special about this controller of course that if you happen to get the PlayStation 4 uh, 20th anniversary console itself, that costs way more than the PS4 Pro 500 million limited edition, but I wasn't going to get that because, you know, it's an older PS4 model and has 500 gigabytes, of course, and that would take up, you know, less space and that's way too much money. But I like the controller though because it kind of like it's kind of like old school. Now, if you remember back in uh, 2019, May of 2019, I went to like a gaming convention. There was like some gaming expo convention, like Spring Play, uh, that was taking place around the Microsoft headquarters in Times Square, Manhattan. There was a section in the video where I happened to have played a game that someone was doing in development and I happened to use a PlayStation 4 controller and specifically 
funny enough, the controller that I was using happens to be the specifically the PlayStation 4 20th anniversary uh, controller right here. Now, it's obviously not the exact same controller that I had in my hands years ago. This is obviously the same model, but like, you know, different person. Uh, you know, had this probably on eBay, like I said. So the person that I was playing that demo back in 2019, he, of course, obviously did not gave me this controller because, well, you know, he had to use it for, like, anybody who wants to try out the game. So it's funny enough and ironic that I happen to have played a demo of a game with this particular PS4 limited edition controller. And now moving on here, we got the Darth Vader one. Now this was bundled in the Star Wars Battlefront 1 PlayStation 4. Like the PlayStation 4 had the faceplate of Darth Vader. And what's so cool about this particular controller, it's that if you notice or if you glance at Darth Vader's like torso, he has like the buttons and all that. This happens to correlate to Darth Vader's, or rather Palpatine says it, torso light bright. So this right here, right here, happens to be said the Darth Vader model for the PlayStation 4 and what's so cool is the unique here is that the touchpad right here happens to say Star Wars Star Wars Star Wars Star Wars Star Wars in honor of the Battlefront game this happens to be one of my favorite controllers design wise and it correlates to the 500 million limited edition right here because it so shiny and all that. <laughs> now, moving on to the last one. Now, this right here happens to be the Spider-Man controller. Now, at first glance, you're like, why is this the Spider-Man controller? It's just red and white. It doesn't really correlate to Spider-Man as a whole. Like, it doesn't really have, like, any blue on it. It doesn't have, like, a web symbol. And I kind of agree, like... Particularly the Spider-Man PS4 controller. Specifically when they came out with the game Spider-Man on PS4 back in September 2018. It's just red and white. I guess it's to symbolize the red and the white design of the uh, Spider logo. But still, if you're going to make like the Spider-Man PS4 limited edition controller, at least... Put more effort into the design, like, at least add some blue, you know, add, like, the webbing and all that. But no, it's just red and white. And as you see here, like, someone must have used this previously before me, and the controllers look a little, like, yellow-ish. I guess it's over time of over-usage, or, or if that's sun-damaged. I don't know. But either way... Honestly, if I were to have to rank these controllers, in my opinion, that I own, from worst to best, I would say I would have to go with... The worst would have to be the particular one, the Spider-Man one, because like I said, it's just red and white, you know? There's no blue or any uh, web symbol involved, or webbing for that matter. Uh... The second place would, or rather third place, depending on how you look at it, would be this the the twentieth anniversary controller because you know it's just as much as it is a, a classic, an OG. It's just you know gray, which tends to be like a dull color, or like a colorless color gray. That's pretty much it. Not much to it. I would have to say. This would be in second place because it's just so cool. You get to s closely see the insides of the controller. Kind of make it special and unique in its own way. Like I said, it's got to fix the stick drift someday. And of course, number one in my favorite 
happens to be the Darth Vader one. Well, if you look at this one right here, obviously, it's very shiny. It's cool. It represents his, uh, of course, like I said, once again, Palpatine Robot Chicken says Torso Light Bright. And the touchpad says Star Wars on it. That's very, 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 very cool. This feels very nice. So, yeah, that's pretty much my reasoning for getting the PlayStation 4 Pro, downgrading it to last gen console, opposed to the current gen of the PlayStation 5, or rather, the PlayStation 5 Slim. Now, there are rumors that in speculation that the PlayStation 5 Pro is going to be launching sometime around holiday of rather the end of this year. There's rumors that it's going to be the most powerful console, even more powerful than currently the Xbox Series X. I don't know if that's going to be true or not. We don't know. However, there's also rumors and speculation that it's going to be PlayStation 3 uh, backwards compatible. So if you have, let's say, a PlayStation 3 physical copy, you can play that on the PlayStation 5 Pro. We don't know that. But if that's the case, then cool. I can, let's say... Get a PS3 physical copy of God of War 3, and I'd be able to play the PS3 version of God of War 3, the original from 2010, on the PlayStation 5 Pro. Like how I played the God of War 3 remastered on my PlayStation 4. So that way I can get the PlayStation 3 original version of God of War 3, and then double platinum that, because I tend to platinum every game that I've played. I could show off one day my games collection on my PlayStation 4. That might happen. Who knows? We'll see. So, that's going to be it for the video. As always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.